Luke chapter 1 verse 13. And we'll start back in verse 11. I have a 9. 8. And it came to pass, verse 8, that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his courts, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. They were not in the holy place. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. Thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. All right, so there will be no plague or death as we studied last time. That's why we went into King Saul when he loses the kingdom. Why we went into Uzziah where he gets leprosy. Why was Zacharias fearing? Because he knew what the Old Testament said about men who went where they were not supposed to. There was no death. It was a time of prayer. Verse 10. Incense that we read and studied, the book of Revelation represents prayer. So what time would you get to have God come down and say, I've answered your prayer? And you've got to know that in this period of prayer we are in the holy place I gotta keep stressing that while we are in chapter 1 because you can't just take the events that happen and say well there's nothing suspicious about it there is a lot going on that we need to stress as we study this passage Again, we are in a holy place. No one's allowed in there but the priest. There's an angel there now. Zacharias was afraid of him. Knowing what the Old Testament scriptures said about people going in where they weren't supposed, the plagues and death and the loss of kingdoms because of it. We know that no death happens. We know that a prayer has been answered. The prayer is for a son. That seems to be one of the prayers that Zacharias is having. Because this angel says, Thy prayer has heard, and thy wife, Elizabeth, will bear thee a son. We are told that Isaac entreated the Lord for Rebekah. This child will be named John. He is pre-named like Jesus, Isaac, Ishmael, and others. Find the children who were named before they were born, and you'll have yourself a good study. We're not going to get into it. Verse 14. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. Uh, birth. I wanted to say, you're going to find that in 65 and 66 when we get there. What do you see in these two verses? He's going to have his baby, and, and he's going to be happy. No. Oh, yeah, but no. This angel is a messenger of God, and he has a prophetic message. Something that has not happened is being told is what's going to happen. 
Verse 14 is important because when you get to verse 65, let's read. And fear came on all that dwelt round about them, and all these sayings were noise about throughout all the hill country of Judea. And they were and they that heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What manner of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was upon him. His mouth is loose. They are rejoicing that this child has opened his father's mouth. It's all been spoken about this angel to Zacharias in the holy place. We are reading prophecy of the father and the son. The forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ. A sign to Israel. And they all reject it. Verse 14. The answer to prayer will bring joy and gladness and rejoicing at the birth. Verse 15. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. And shall drink neither wine nor strong drink and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb the he is the child John we are still talking about this one child we are not talking about Jesus we're talking about John the Baptist, John Baptist, the forerunner that is mentioned in the scriptures. Ephesians 5.18. Ephesians 5.18. We find something written. Very important. That every Christian should follow. In Ephesians 5.18 Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess but be filled with the Spirit. What we find in the angel proclaiming the birth and the pregnancy of John is to be found in every Christian. We're to have more of the filling of the Spirit than we are to have the filling of the alcohol. Now he is like unto a Nazarite. Number six three. Number six three. Now do you know of another woman who was told not to drink, not to have anything of the vine tree? As you go to number six three. And that child was anything but like John the Baptist. The child's name was Samson. His mother was told not to have anything to do with a vine tree. No raisins, no grapes, never mind wine. And not to cut his hair. Numbers chapter 6 verse 3. He shall separate himself from wine and strong drink, and shall drink no vinegar wine, or vinegar strong drink, neither shall he drink any liquor of grapes, nor eat moist grapes, or dried raisins. Samson's mother and John the Baptist's mother have this done in the womb and not just birth Nazareth is to separate that child separate yourself to God 
And if you want to be a proper Christian mother, it would be separate yourself from that child being in your womb, or even before that child's in your womb, no alcohol, no wine at all. And then there must be something wrong with grapes and, and raisins during a pregnancy. Or God is just, this is something about that vine. God is not for drinking. It causes trouble. It causes birth defects. It causes problems. Now about this womb, Galatians 1.15. Galatians 1.15. He's called from the, even before. John the Baptist has not been conceived yet. Zacharias has not gone home yet. Okay? Galatians 1.15. Open my page there. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, and called me by his grace, Now, you cannot run to the Calvinistic doctrine, okay, from the womb, all was free. Now, that's not the case. Every man is given free will, but God, knowing foreknowledge of what your decision will be, I know personally God has called me from the womb, personally. There are things that involve my birth. Somebody tried to stop. I wasn't even supposed to be. I was a pill baby. I was unplanned by human and wanted by God. Several and many accounts of my early childhood ended up in hospital and near death. From the womb, God has set his, his mind upon me to preach the gospel. Upon Paul. Upon John the Baptist. Jeremiah 1.5 Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 Again this is based upon foreknowledge of God on what somebody will already know what you will do before you are even born before Adam and Eve were formed. Verse 5, Jeremiah 1. Before I formed thee, God, talking to Jeremiah, before I formed thee in the belly, and we've already studied through Psalms that children are a heritage of the Lord, they are a gift of God. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee for knowledge. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee for knowledge. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Jeremiah, by, by the foreknowledge of God, and Paul, by the foreknowledge of God, set out these gentlemen knowing what they would do. I'm going to call you. I'm going to call you to service.
So yes, there is a calling for some to preach the gospel. And God knows who you are. Do you think John's father would ever imagine that he'd be out there baptizing in the Jordan and preaching and, and treating the Pharisees and the Sadducees with such, oh, mean, you, you mean spirited like that? I don't think so. You think Jeremiah's parents would be, oh, Jeremiah, you're going you're gonna to preach against this nation? Oh, man, what, you know, what about... Listen, the people of Jeremiah's own city wanted him dead. And they were priests. God says in Isaiah, who, who will I send? And God already knowing the answer by Isaiah, say, send me, Lord. Judges 13.3. Judges 13, verse 3. Judges 13, verse 3. Samson. The angel of the Lord. Does that sound familiar? I know it wasn't the angel of the Lord. I wasn't. I know it's not the Lord Jesus Christ showing up to Zacharias. But here's an angel showing up, telling about a baby's birth. Don't you think Zacharias should got the point? An angel has come to him to bring a message, like an angel has brought a message to Manoah and his wife in the holy place. Gotta get that. Where no man is allowed but priests. But the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold, now thou art barren, and bearest not. But thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine nor strong drink. Eat not anything, eat not any unclean thing. In other words, obey the law. No shrimp. No lobster. No selfish. No Gentile food. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. And you can read again number six, what we read. Unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistine. John the Baptist is going to get to deliver Israel from out of the hand of Satan by proclaiming Jesus Christ, the Messiah. He says from the Philistines. I wonder if Samson would have had a holy and righteous life. I wonder what Samson would have done for the Lord properly. Just throw that out there. What if Samson actually did right? John the Baptist did right. You know what he ended up? He lost his head in jail. Now, Matthew 11.9 about this great Matthew 11 9 Matthew 11 9 we're going to touch the bases I I no rush I want to get all we can get the army says I can be all I can be well I want to get all we can get from the scripture my ministry is to reach out to those that are lost with the gospel 
and to those that are saved to be taught up and to be trained in the Word of God. That means if you're a newborn babe, I want you to grow. If you're young, I want you to grow. And if you're old in age like Paul was, I want you to remember. That's my ministry. If you haven't heard it, I want you to learn it. If you've heard it, I want you to remember it. In Matthew eleven nine, this is Jesus speaking. What? But what went ye out to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written. Behold, I send my messenger before thy face which shall prepare the way before thee. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, that's every woman that has born children, there has not risen a greater, run that back to Luke one fifteen, the mouth of Jesus, than John the Baptist. John the Baptist, according to Jesus, is the greatest of all men. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. If you're humble and meek, serving the Lord Jesus Christ, You'll be right up there with John the Baptist. You take a beating for all they that live, live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. All John did was went up to the king and said, listen, you're doing wrong. I don't think he did it to, to be mean and cruel. I think he, hey, I'm trying to help you out. What you did, God is not happy. And unlike David and Nathan... Nathan was rewarded. John the Baptist was given into prison and hated. John was hated by his own people. Back to Luke 1.15. For he shall be great. And I have a note here. Let's see. Luke 7.28. Let's see what this note is. Luke 7.28. Got it circled, so 7.28. We'll be going to scriptures. And, and it's the same thing we read in Matthew. For I say unto you, Jesus speaking, Among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. But he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. John ranks right up there. In verse 16. And many. Where have you seen that before? And many, not all the nation. Many go into the broad, go into the broad way, but few go into the straight gate. John is not going to get one hundred percent of the people. You are not, according to Scripture, going to get 100% of the people saved in your ministry. It's recorded Scripture. Few for those that, that witness and, and get the gospel out there. For John, it was many, not all. There are people who will die and go to hell rejecting Jesus Christ. No matter what you do,
Because men love darkness. And when we look at Matthew chapter 3 verse 4, about these people that are coming to John, Matthew 3, 4, In the same time, John had his raiment of camel's hair and leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the regions round about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. There are people coming around all the region. But when he saw the many of the many of the Pharisees, not all of them, and Sadducees come to his baptism, see in the beginning of John, the Pharisees and Sadducees didn't show didn't show up most of them. Mark 1 5. And they went out unto him all the land of Judea. They of Jerusalem were all baptized of him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. So some do come, but not all. Back to Luke 1. And many of the children of Israel Does that say Jew and Gentile? According to Romans 10? There is no Gentile in this group. And they are, the Bible records, and many of the children of Israel. I like that story that Pastor told us the other night. The Gentiles are in the River Jordan having water fights and beating each other up. It's the nation of Israel. And I don't think John the Baptist, I'm going to stretch this out there, maybe, maybe I'm going to throw a rattlesnake in there. Okay? You ready for this one? You put it in the garbage. I don't think John is baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I don't think so. Now maybe we'll study. Maybe, maybe my, I don't think he is. I think the only time he baptizes in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost is when Jesus goes on the water, God speaks, and the Holy Spirit comes down. And many of the children of Israel shall be shall he turn to the Lord their God. John is a directional. John is a voice in the wilderness saying, Come this way! Read Isaiah. We're going to read the accounts. We're going to study them. I, uh, Isaiah. John is a voice. When you go knocking on doors, we're here to ask you, have you ever received Christ as your Savior? 
You are a voice. When you stand on the street and you preach about heaven and hell and Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, you are a voice. Come to Jesus! So we are. John wore camel's raiment and a leathern girdle. He did not have a three-piece suit and a tie. Oh, I bet you he offended in his dress. The Sadducees and the Pharisees. But who cares? He's a voice. I put these nice little button-up shirts on when we do these things. Because oh, you think I look nice. Every time I do that for these videos, I think it's a clerical call. It's a show. You're not supposed to be looking at me. You're supposed to be looking at Jesus. I think the church has conformed to the world and, and adapt to their practices. You expect a preacher to be up there in a suit and tie. Well, you expect a Roman Catholic to be up there with his collar on backwards. Wearing a robe. That's a sign of religion. I don't care what you like and don't like, and that's what I'm saying. When the people expect you to do something, and by accident you wear a black sock and a white sock, and that, that destructs the whole listen, that's the flesh. It should be about the message, about the voice of the message of God and his son. I think a guy that's in a Middle East country or an Asianic country or a European country, if he's in jail right now for the, for the gospel and the word of God and for Jesus, and he's using the opportunity to, to preach to the people in that prison, I don't think he has a tie. And yet it brought many of the children of Israel. But not all. A man's heart is wicked and it's evil and he loves darkness. If he's going to turn away from God, he may use you as, as an excuse, but the main foundation is he does not want to leave his darkness. He does not want to leave his sin. He does not want to turn to God. I've seen men downtown just hold the sign wearing blue jeans. So what's what's a what? We wear t-shirts. It's the voice, it's the message. Now I'm not advocating wearing shorts and stuff like that. I'm to be proper. But for some preachers, more time is spent on dress than it is the message. John, Jesus said, is the greatest man outside of all those that are meek and humble that serve the Lord Jesus Christ, yet future. I don't know if it says anywhere where John is going to get the reign in the millennium. But he has the same results we're going to have. He's going to get many of the people, we're going to get few.
Now back to Zacharias real quick. We're going to close. He's in the holy place. This person has shown up that does not belong there. We are told it is an angel. There are no feathers. He doesn't worship the angel. The angel has a message from God about prayer as the people are praying as he's working the incense, which is a representation of prayer. And the prayer is you're going to have a son, old man. You and the old lady are going to have a son. Sound familiar? Now, this boy is going to name John. Let me tell you about John and what he's going to do. Let me give you something about his mother and what she is not to do. Now about this filling of the, of the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost. Verse 15. It says, Drink nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost. Jump down to verse 41. And it came to pass that when Mary heard the salutation, when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe John leaped in her womb. The baby kicked. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And the baby talked in tongues. No. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost by Mary coming in being impregnated by the Holy Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. John has been anointed in the womb. His mother has been anointed by the Holy Spirit. And she spake with a loud voice. All right, there's a loud voice, but it's to praise God. There's no tongues. Multitudes are coming to John. He has grown attention. Exactly what the Bible says. And many, many people are coming to him, and but the few are, are really obeying him. Because among the many are the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and even of them we read, not all the Pharisees and the Sadducees are showing up. So already we're seeing the few of the few. And many of the children of Israel, Israel, Israel. They have not rejected the Messiah yet, and the Messiah hasn't even been incarnated yet. He hasn't even been born. John, we're going to see, is going to give a three-month start. And we're going to get into next time Elijah and the ministry, Lord willing, of John the Baptist. But we're not done with the Father yet. Because something's going, something big's going to happen to him. And if we look at the study of angels, when we look at the study of the holy place, when we look at the study of the priest, when we look at Zacharias, who was blameless before the Lord, had a little problem. We all have little problems. For all have sinned and come to the shore of the glory of God. We'll get to that later. Lord willing.